Thank you for joining us again on another one of our Pray TV programs. Charlotte is here with me today. Thank you, dear, for joining us at the table. I'm glad to be here today. So thankful for God's Word. What an anchor it is in the times we're living in when everything is just so topsy-turvy. We just want to focus on the Lord for these moments today and on His Word. I am so grateful for what God has done, how faithful He has proven Himself in our lives. We're very, very thankful for you being a part of this program so that we can pray together. It is our desire to be able to provoke one another to love and good works, as the scriptures tell us to do. Today we're looking at Acts chapter 2, verse 36 through 40 in the New International Version of the Bible. And I had shared about this on Sunday at the, our church, at our home church. And it really is important for us to be able to see what Peter was saying here in these words in the book of Acts. This is when he stood up after the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit on Pentecost and he shared with the people and many came to the knowledge of Christ and yielded themselves over to God. And he spoke these words, he said, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, who you crucified, both the Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are afar off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Charlotte, you know, as we've pondered this and we've thought about this over the last number of days, it's just been something that's been heavy on our hearts. And as we've been praying into these scriptures, I just believe God's speaking something fresh to each person who's with us and watching. Just share a little bit, dear. We find the word repent so often in the word of God in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And it basically means a godly sorrow that produces change, a turning. We're going in one direction, and then by God's power, we turn and we go in the opposite direction. It means a returning to the Lord with all of our hearts. And Peter understood what he was talking about, because you remember how Peter had denied Jesus three times, even as a disciple of his when he was warming his hands at the fire there when Jesus was being scourged. And this little girl said to him, aren't you one of those followers of Jesus? And he lied and denied it three times. And yet after the resurrection, Jesus gave Peter that beautiful opportunity when he cooked breakfast on the beach for his disciples to affirm his love for him three times. And Peter had gone through a real process of deep, deep sorrow and repentance. And so on the day of Pentecost, when he stood up and he said these words to repent, he really understood what he was talking about. And he understood that repentance is really the gift of God. It is not a negative thing. It is God's command and it is also God's grace that can, we can turn our hearts towards Him. We can, we can experience change in our lives, true, lasting change. As we bring our sins into the light, we confess them before God, before others. We are healed, and we are transformed, and we are changed. You know, Charlotte, the truth is that as long as we keep our sin hidden and covered, that sin has power over us. Mm -hmm. But at the moment that we begin to recognize 
that we will not live with the sin any longer. We will repent. We will get it out there. We will give it voice. We will confess it before the Lord, but also before trusted other people who can steward that with integrity. It's important to say that. When we do that, the power of sin is broken in our lives. Now, we can all just kind of theorize that the power of sin is broken at the cross, which it is, and we look to that, but as long as we are keeping ourselves hidden about our sin, then that sin and shame of that sin and fear of being found out has a way of having power over us. So the way to break the power of sin is to be transparent before God and man concerning it. And when we come to that and we do that, then God gives us the freedom and God manifests his power over sin. I'm going to read this portion one more time and then we're going to pray into it. Acts chapter 2 verses 36 through 40 in the New International Version of the Bible. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are afar off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Charlotte, I think I'm gonna begin the type of prayer here because we just need to see God, save us from this corrupt generation. We're living in a corrupt generation. We know there's an ebb and flow in the generations. And there are seasons where there is great repentance and turning to God, and there is a righteousness in the land. And then there are times when the sin arises and people rebel against God and, and they turn from Him and, and they hide their sin and they, and they declare that their sin isn't even sin. And God is wanting us to be able to just lay low ourselves before the throne and declare His ability to save us. So Father, we pray exactly what Peter told those Jews who listened to him on the day of Pentecost. He said, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And Father, we're asking you because this is the part that we do. This is the part that is our responsibility. And we save ourselves from this corrupt generation by confessing our sins, by admitting our sins, by coming and being open about the condition of our soul and the condition of our heart. And you can change us, Lord. You transform us. This is your hope. It is the hope of eternal life. Lord, that you will do what no other thing on earth can do. You can save us from our sinful nature. You can save us from that fallen nest. You can make us into new creatures in Christ Jesus who then are able to overcome by the word of our testimony, the blood of the Lamb, which saves us, and the word of our testimony, which gives credit where credit is due. It is due to you and your saving grace, Lord. Thank you. We praise you, Lord. Charlotte, we can continue our time of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for the example of Peter. We thank you, Lord, that he did not allow his failure to just overwhelm him, Lord, but that as he repented of his denial of you and even wept bitterly, that, Father, you met him in that place and you raised him up. And you transformed him, Lord, so much that he was able to stand in front of thousands of people on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem and declare his faith in you, Lord, and affirm his faith in you as his risen Lord. Father, may we not see repentance as some kind of negative thing, God, 
Lord, it is your gift to us. It is the gift of repentance that you freely give to us, Lord, for our healing and our transformation. And so we pray today, Lord, that we would surrender every area of our hearts, Lord, that you are really wanting to change. And we know often what they are, Lord. And we pray we would not believe the lie of the evil one that we cannot change. For you have said from glory to glory, you are changing us, Father. And we thank you for your resurrection life that has the power, Lord, to transform us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And Father, we just thank you that you are working this same grace in every one of us who are gathering and praying together. The grace of God is there as equipping, empowering for your life to be able to be transformed. Enter into it, thank him for it, receive that grace and repent and turn and be the new person that God has intended you to be. He's called you into a dynamic life of overcoming victory to give praise to his name. God bless you.